Welcome back to the Bible Reading Project. It is Tuesday. Hoping to inspire you to read the Bible every single day. Zero excuse. I always say this. I hope it's working. Remember, I say it over and over, but it's good for us. John 6.63, Jesus says, My words, they're spirit and they're life. So what we're asking, just a sentence, just a paragraph, a chapter. Don't make it so hard. Make it easy. And they're life to you. And Proverbs chapter 4 says that those words, Proverbs 4, 20, 21, 22, right in there. It says that this, the word of God, is health to your body and medicine to your whole being. So, if it's life and medicine, take it every day. It changes your life. No excuses. Do it. Psalm 39. First, just a, a little heads up. This summer... I'm going to be putting these two guitars to work uh, right there and right there. Both Telecasters, American Telecasters, uh, for Blues and Barbecue. So raising money again, Blues and Barbecue. It's going to be super good. Get a ticket. I'll let you know when it comes. It's June 10th and 11th weekend, but it's going to be fun. Got some good folks coming in to jam and just do blues music. So I'm already putting the list together. So make sure. And then another comment. People have asked me about my beard get a lot of comments on it. Where did I get it? <laughs> well, from here. So what I did is I took the hair from here and moved it to here. So this is typically how long my hair would be on top if I took this hair here. Moved it down to here and then they say, well, how come you're, you have brown hair up here and white hair down here? Okay. Brown hair up here, I'm a man, and I'm easygoing. White hair down here, I live with all women. That's simple. <laughs> Psalm 39, it's going to be so good today. Hang in there with me. I'm going to read it. New Living Translation today. So listen or read along with me. I'm going to read the whole thing and then make a comment. I hope it inspires you. I hope it helps you. I hope it challenges you to be a better person in your faith. Let's jump in. Let's read it. Here we go. Verse 1. I said to myself, I will watch what I do and not sin in what I say. I will hold my tongue when the ungodly are around me. This is a tough chapter. But as I stood there in silence, not even speaking of good things, the turmoil within me grew worse. And the more I thought about it, the hotter I got, igniting a fire of words. Lord, remind me how brief my time on earth will be and remind me my, that my days are numbered and how fleeting my life is. You have made my life no longer than the width of my hand. So here's, here's my take. He was trying to keep his mouth shut. He wanted to keep his mouth shut. He couldn't keep his mouth shut. So he ponied up with a whole bunch of words and opened up his mouth. And then the next verse was, God, please remind me how brief my life is. My take is he was probably married and he wanted to say something to his wife, but he should have kept his mouth shut, but he didn't. And then the next verse he realized, I'm about to die. My life's about as long as my hand. That's just my take. That's Mark's commentary. If I ever write a Bible, buy it. It's going to be interesting. Or a commentary Bible. You've made my life no longer than the width of my hand. My entire lifetime is just a moment to you. At best, each of us is but a breath. We're merely moving shadows in all of our busy rushing ends in nothing. We heap up wealth, not even knowing who's going to spend it. And so, Lord, where do I put my hope? My only hope is in you. Rescue me from my rebellion and do not let fools mock me. I'm silent before you. Pretty, pretty smart fellow. I won't say a word for my punishments from you, but please stop striking me. I'm exhausted by the blows of your hand. When you discipline us for our sins, you consume like a moth what is precious to us, and each of us is but a breath. Hear my prayer, O Lord. And listen to my cries for help, and don't ignore my tears. 
for I am your guest, a traveler passing through as my ancestors were before me. Leave me alone so I can smile again before I'm gone and exist no more. It's a great psalm. It challenges all of us. Starts out with a need to keep my mouth zipped, but I cannot keep my mouth zipped. So I open up my mouth, which reminds me, man, my life is so brief. It's not going well. He really wanted to talk to God. Like, I really just want to let God have it because I don't think things are going well for me here. I feel like God's against me. I feel like God is striking me. I really want to open my mouth and just let God have it, but I need to keep my mouth shut because things just aren't going well for me. And then this verse is what I want you to note today. Verse 12, I hope this inspires you. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and listen to my cries for help, and don't ignore my tears, for I am your guest, a traveler passing through as my ancestors were before me. Here is what I'd like to challenge you with today is that all the stuff we do, the work, 50 hours a week, all the stuff we do with our kids, all of the things that we work so hard to amass and to get up that according to this, we just leave behind and people fight over it, right? They fight over our inheritance or our retirement or whatever I leave behind for the kids to who's going to get the car and who's going to get the house. But he says this, he says, look, don't, don't worry about it. God, just help remind me that I'm just a traveler here. I'm a guest. Think about this for a minute. When you go on vacation, let's say it's a summer vacation. We just got back from Disney World. When you're there, things are so different than when they are at home. It's like all the cares go out, unless you're a man, and, and it's expensive. But other than that, it's like, it's not really my hotel and bed, it, and I, maybe I take my pillow, but somebody else cleans up after me. It's not my swimming pool. I swim in someone else's pool. I enjoy the beach. It's a restaurant I go to eat, so somebody else feeds me and cleans up after me. And it's like all the cares. When we were at Disney, I'm like, how can you even be miserable at Disney World? Everybody here is happy, and you just have three or four days at Disney of bliss, and then you come back home and go, oh, the bills, the work, the the dog, the chores, the house, the, everything piles up on you, all the stuff I have to do. And then the reality sinks in of, well, I'm not just a guest on vacation anymore. I'm back home into the muck and the mire and the the hell of life. And, and then I hopefully save up enough money to do it again. And then we get our yearly two weeks off and we go try to binge and relax, binge watch our favorite, maybe kick back with a margarita on the on the beach and chill out a little bit and then come back to the grind. Listen to what he says again in verse 12. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and listen to my cries for help and don't ignore my tears for I'm your guest, a traveler passing through. Do you know that if you could change the way you think about your life on earth, most of your stress would leave, most of your anxiety would go away? If you just simply realize rather than seeing your daily life as you're bound to something and start seeing your daily life as you're on vacation. You're on vacation on planet Earth and you're living all stressed out. He says this, my life here on Earth, I'm just a traveler passing through. This is not my real home. My real home's not even here. And so think of it this way. You're stressed out, you're frustrated, you have bills, things aren't going your way, you're having a bad day, life sucks, poor pitiful me. Well, if you'll learn to rethink your life, you're not in the grind. You're not just living life Monday through Monday, every day waiting on a vacation. Your entire waking existence is, you're just a guest here. You're a traveler. So if you're a guest in your everyday life, just like when you're on vacation and you let other people feed you, you let other people clean up after you, you let other people take care of all the stuff and you just enjoy it. Maybe what we need to see about God, maybe why I'm so stressed is I don't let God take care of it. Maybe why I'm so anxious, I don't let God take care of it. I don't, let, I don't even give God the time to fix it. I don't even give God the time to work my life out. I just lived angry, stressed, frustrated, burned out, hopeless, and I'm just a guest. If I'm just a guest here on planet Earth, then guess what? That means somebody else is in charge of all my stuff, and somebody else is going to take care of all my stuff. I just need to sit back, relax, and live in peace, and let God do what he does best 
which is I just need to trust him because he's faithful. Have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow.